Hey there, nerds, Matt Lieberman here. We live in a golden age of superhero movies, where even ideas that once seemed crazy to studios, like that little talking raccoon walking tree movie, are not only making it to the big screen, but blowing us away and making bank at the box office. However, Hollywood's history with capes is downright weird, and there are a ton of truly strange movies that never made it to theaters, and I'm not talking about Magic Cumberbatches. This is my top 10 list of the weirdest superhero movies that never got made. Now, whatever your feelings are on Batman v Superman Dawn of Martha, you have to admit that it's damn exciting seeing Batman and Superman on screen together. Well, if things had gone differently, we would have seen them on screen together in a very different movie back in 2004. World's finest Batman vs. Superman would have been directed by Wolfgang Peterson, best known for The Perfect Storm, Das Boot, and Troy, the movie he made instead of Bat v. Supes. The script was written by Andrew Kevin Walker, who wrote the movie Seven, and was a dark, mature take on both heroes that was way ahead of its time. It featured the Joker murdering Batman's wife, Elizabeth, and manipulating him into believing that the Man of Steel did the deed. Of course, the studio got nervous nervous that the film wouldn't appeal to kids or sell enough merchandise, which as we all know is the only reason to make a superhero movie. So they brought on Academy Award winning screenwriter Akiva Goldsman, our old pal who wrote Batman and Robin to jazz things up. Remember how good that movie's script was? Well, if it's ice, the ice man wants. Alfred. The casting of the film made it even weirder, as Wolfgang Peterson was eager to cast Jude Law as Superman and was considering either Colin Farrell or eventual Batman Christian Bale for the Bat part. The movie fell apart after 18 months of development when Warners decided to make separate Batman and Superman movies, which, incidentally, are also both on this list. If you're a fan of Elektra, Ella D. Young's portrayal on the second season of Daredevil was like a breath of fresh air following the disaster that was the 2005 Elektra movie starring Jennifer Garner. However, somewhere out in the multiverse, that was not the first first Elektra movie to make it to the big screen. Back in 1992, Oliver Stone, fresh off directing JFK and The Doors, was eager to bring an Elektra movie titled Elektra Assassin to the big screen. Though it shared the name of Frank Miller's run on the character, the stories had very little to do with each other as rights issues made it impossible for Elektra to be hunted by S.H.I.E.L.D. as she was in the comics. Instead, she'd be going hand to hand with the hand. Get, you get it? Cause body, <sighs> Development on the project never really took off and was ultimately kiboshed when the rights to Elektra were bundled up with Daredevil and Bullseye and then sold off. The weirdness factor comes not only from Oliver Stone, who'd only done gritty real world films like Platoon and Wall Street up until that point, but the early 90s era. The finished product would have looked nothing like anything we've ever seen from Marvel Comics on screen. Now at number eight comes the most well-known and well-discussed movie on this list, Tim Burton's Superman Lives. The movie's promise and eventual cancellation are chronicled in John Schnepp's awesome documentary, The Death of Superman. Superman Lives What Happened, but I'll give you the gist. Imagine Tim Burton directing Nicolas Cage as Superman in a universe-spanning fight against Brainiac featuring insane out-there creature and costume designs in a largely pre-CG world. The movie would have shown off an entirely different side of Kal-El as Cage and Burton were very interested in portraying the weirdness of being an alien among humans. There was also a light-up super suit for reasons that we may never understand. This is one that I really, really wish that we could have seen. Hey, remember earlier when I said World's Finest was scrapped for two other movies? One of them was an adaptation of Frank Miller's Batman Year One by filmmaker Darren Aronofsky, director of Black Swan, The Wrestler, and Requiem for a Dream. To say that Year One is one of the best Batman comics ever would be an understatement. It's beloved by fans, and with Aronofsky at the helm, we'd surely get an amazing movie, right? Well, it definitely would have been unique, which is rarely the first word you want to hear about an adaptation of a much-loved comic. Aronofsky's script had many differences from Batman Year One, and really just Batman in general. For example, after his parents are murdered, Bruce Wayne loses his fortune and becomes homeless. He's then trained on the street by Lil Al, an African-American man who owns an auto repair shop. Instead of using, I don't know, fighting, Batman fights crime using chemical weapons, much like in the original Bill Finger comic. And finally, he was never afraid of or inspired by bats. Instead, a criminal mistakes a ring with a cross T and W that Bruce wears for a bat symbol. Also, Commissioner Gordon is suicidal. Not exactly the most fun time at the movies. Christian Bale was once again tapped to play the lead in this film and stayed on when Warner's canceled year one in favor of Batman Begins. At number six, we have the Fantastic Four. Not that Fantastic Four, or that one. Ooh, definitely not that one. I'm talking about Ant-Man director Peyton Reed's scrapped early 2000s pitch, which was set in the 60s, and which he compares to the Beatles movie classic, A Hard Day's Night. Reed was particularly interested in the Fantastic Four being, quote, daytime superheroes, and New York celebrities who you could watch fight a monster on your way to work. Not many details are available about this outside the box approach to New York's first family, but it couldn't be worse than any of the Fantastic Four movies that we got, right? Right? 
Now, at number five, we have the other movie that almost happened after World's Finest fell apart, the infamous Superman Flyby, written by J.J. Abrams and almost directed by Brett, I nearly killed the X-Men franchise, Ratner. The movie was savaged at the time for its script, in which Krypton never blew up, Superman fights using Matrix-style kung fu, and in a shocking twist of twists, Lex Luthor is a Kryptonian sleeper agent hell-bent on defeating Superman. Not kidding. Now, I've heard a lot about this movie over the years, so out of sheer curiosity, I checked out the script, and while there is plenty to be fan outraged over. The movie is actually tonally a lot closer to Superman as we know him and love him than Man of Steel ever was. It's worth a read if you can find it. That, of course, by no means means that the movie would have definitely been good, you know, Brett Ratner directing and all, but it's certainly one of the stranger revisionist takes on this list and it's definitely worth a read. Now, sometimes you read about a movie that's so cool that its cancellation makes you physically angry. Green Arrow Escape from Supermax is just such a movie. Years before the larger global audience was introduced to Oliver Queen on the CW's Arrow, David S. Goyer and Justin Marks developed a movie in which the first 10 minutes, the Green Arrow is framed for murder, caught, unmasked, and sent to Supermax, essentially Alcatraz for supervillains, an inescapable labyrinth filled with danger. He'd then team up with a group of supervillains to escape and clear his name. The movie would have been loaded with fan service including cameos from Lex Luthor, the Riddler, and at one point, Heath Ledger's Joker. While we're finally getting a big screen bad guy team up this summer in Suicide Squad, it's not hard to imagine the levels of awesome on display in this lost Hollywood gem. Now try, for a moment, to imagine a world where Robert Downey Jr. never played Iron Man. There's no MCU, no Avengers, and certainly no shared universe bullshit being crafted at every single studio in Hollywood. I hate that shit. Instead, we got 2001's Iron Man starring Tom Cruise and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Following the box office failure of his third film, Jackie Brown, Tarantino flirted with the idea of bringing Iron Man to the big screen. Not much is known about this era in the property's development, but it would have been Tarantino's first action film and certainly his first attempt at an effects-driven blockbuster. Would he have written the movie himself? Would it have been a hard R? It's amazing to think about the kind of Tony Stark that he would have created, but personally, I'm real happy with the movie we got. At number two, we have James Cameron's truly, truly insane take on Spider-Man that we almost got back in the early 90s. With Leonardo DiCaprio set to star as Peter Parker, the movie would have featured heavy profanity, completely rewritten origins for Electro and Sandman, and would have climaxed with Peter Parker and Mary Jane making sweet spider love on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. What? what Oh, and you know, Peter is gonna be tempted by a villain to join a race of super mutants that were gonna take over the world, which totally happens in Spider-Man, right? That sounds like a Spider-Man thing I've heard of, hmm? Real glad we lost this one, just throwing that out there. And finally, at number one, we have the most baffling entry on this list, Green Lantern circa 2004, set to star Jack Black as Hal Jordan. This comedic take on the character was written by SNL and Conan vet Robert Smigel and was a riff on the idea of what would happen if the wrong person got the Green Lantern ring. The movie ended with Hal pushing the Earth out of the way of an oncoming yellow asteroid, essentially ruining the planet by taking it out of orbit. The movie would have been a costly disaster for all involved and we're better off without it. Now, I'm sure that many of you are like, where's Jess? Justice League Mortal, where's this, where's that? I'm not talking about just 10 unmade superhero movies, I'm talking about my personal thoughts on what are the weirdest superhero movies that we never got. If you have your own list, why don't you let us know down in the comments below. Why don't you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, SourceFed Nerd has awesome content every single day of the week. I'm Matt Lieberman and I'll see you around, bye bye. Hi there, I'm Morta Sandro, here to help out those who know nothing and give you a quick recap of what you need to know about Game of Thrones going into season six. Warning, there are so many spoilers coming out your face.